Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Sir Vince Cable is now, by a country mile, the most openly hostile to Brexit of all the main party leaders. But what's not entirely clear is what a Liberal Democrat immigration policy would look like, and he's with me now. Sir Vince, can I start by asking whether you think Amber Rudd should now resign? I think we should wait and see what she has to say tomorrow. I mean, clearly, she's in considerable difficulty on two scores. I mean, either she's misled Parliament, or she was the last mm. person in the country to know that the Home Office was operating a quota system for deportees, and they're both difficult issues for her, but I, I don't believe in lynch mobs. I, I want to hear what she has to say. You're being very measured, of course. Is that because the Liberal Democrats are also partly responsible for this hostile environment on immigration that's caused the trouble in the first place? Because it happened mm. under the coalition when you guys were there sitting alongside them. Well, actually, we spent a lot of our time in the coalition fighting, <laughs> Theresa May, mm. personally, my case and my colleagues. Mm. Norman Baker resigned over it. I, you know, tried to roll back a lot of the things. But actually, I think all parties have got some responsibility to this. It goes back to new Labour. I think the working assumption that successive governments have made is that the public out there are pretty bigoted uh, and they've got to be given red meat in the form of these very restrictive measures. And it's done a lot of harm. And I think the interesting thing about Windrush is that perhaps for the first time, you know, the public opinion has been ahead of the politicians, seeing that there's mm. a terrible injustice here, uh, and it should not be allowed to pass. And you say that Lib Dems were pushing back against yeah. this policy all the way through, but who was the minister in charge of the crucial cabinet committee at the time? Can you, can you remind us? Well, it may well have been the deputy prime minister, Nick I Clegg. suspect. Surely he, was. he fought a very good fight, actually, on this but he, issue. But he then made a very, very powerful speech about mm. the importance of mm. deporting illegal immigrants yeah. and sort of boasting about how their bank accounts were being frozen and taken mm. away and they weren't being allowed to drive and so on. He sounded very gung-ho for the policy at the time. Uh, 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 well, I don't think that was the spirit that I heard. I mean, there were a whole lot of very powerful measures that Theresa May was pushing at the time. Things like, you know, making landlords responsible for immigration control. Mm -hmm. uh, we stopped that. We simply had pilot yeah. studies. Because once the Lib Dems are out of the coalition, they just introduced the, the policy in a, in a very aggressive way. But I th what, what I think all of this is forgetting about is we're actually dealing with people. Yeah. I mean, on my surgery on Friday night, a, a lady came along. Her husband has been deported tomorrow to Sri Lanka. He alleges he's been uh, tortured, may well have been. And I think you know, the, the, the central point is that we're, we're not talking about numbers here. We're talking about real people. And I hope that one of the lessons of the last few weeks is this is getting through. And I raised the question about a Liberal Democrat immigration mm. policy. Mm. For quite a long time, your party had a policy of an amnesty for illegal immigrants. Mm. Why did that go? Um, I think because an unqualified amnesty is not the right approach, but I think if people have been living here a very long time and they've settled and they've got family here, we should just exercise good judgment. But I think an, a, a, mm. across the board amnesty, regardless of conditions, regardless of whether people have got a criminal record or not, would not be the right approach. But I think where people have been settled, because there's the whole story about Windrush, they've been settled here for a generation, they're law-abiding citizens, they've paid their taxes. They, it's absolutely outrageous that their status should be questioned. So now that I think almost everybody is looking again at immigration policy in the light of this, where would the Liberal Democrats like to be? Uh, I do believe you have to have managed borders, you have to have immigration control, but it should be done in a uh, compassionate and efficient way. I mean, I think one of the problems at the moment is that because the Home Office is hopelessly understaffed, or perhaps not properly managed, but hopelessly understaffed, very large numbers of just terribly inefficient decisions have been made. I mean, uh, also on Friday night, I had a couple came to see me you know, doing mm. high-tech work, their visa clearance should have taken six months maximum. It's taken 80 months. They're now going to lose their jobs. They lose their home. This is happening to tens of thousands of people. It is very, very incompetent, and it needs to be made much more efficient. Um, I mentioned at the top of the programme that you made uh, quite a striking intervention in your speech to the Liberal Democrat yeah. conference in March. I'd just like to remind people of what you said. You're talking about the Brexit vote. Mm. You said, I thought the public have voted to be poorer. Mm. That is their right. 
Yeah. What's changed my mind is the evidence that Brexit was overwhelmingly the choice of the older generation. Too many were driven by a nostalgia for a world where passports were blue, faces were white, and the map was coloured imperial pink. Mm. That sounds as if you're accusing Brexit voters of being racist. Some probably have that uh, attitude. So you, you think but, the Brexit so, but vote not was all. tinged no, by no. racism? The, the simple point I was making was that the Brexit vote was very heavily influenced by age. You know, younger people overwhelmingly voted to remain, older people overwhelmingly voted to leave. And there were different motives. I mean, you know, some good reasons, some bad reasons. But, I mean, after all that we've experienced in the last few weeks around the immigration debate, I mean, the, the, the ugly truth is that race has been a key factor in British politics. I was simply making this quite explicit. Of course, large numbers of older people voted Brexit for what they thought were very good reasons. Nothing some to do voted with that. because they some, were racist. Some undoubtedly were, were concerned with looking back to a, a world where immigration was not an issue in the way it is today. Mm -hmm. And you, the way you phrase that implies that you think because of that the Brexit referendum result wasn't in some sense legitimate. Well, it was legitimate. It happened. I mean, I'm not trying to reopen the, Brex the referendum. It's happened. We're living with the consequences of it. Um, but the view I and my party take is we have no idea at the moment what Brexit's going to look like. I mean, all kind of things could happen. Um, and at the end of it, when we have a clearer picture later this year about what Brexit involved, we go back to the public and have a, a public vote on the outcome. To be absolutely clear, you're not suggesting that lots of Brexit voters didn't vote for Brexit for completely honourable, constitutional absolutely. and reasonable reasons. Absolutely. Okay, and you, want a, and you want this second vote very much. Can I ask you I about... Don't call it, we don't, it is the second vote because it's not rerunning the last one. It I, is a, a great vote semantic on debate. It is, it's, 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 it's an important semantic point. All right, okay, well, a, a, another vote, a vote of the mm. public, whatever we call it. Mm. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the papers today suggesting that there is a majority in the Commons as well as the Lords, to tie the government's hands, as it were, when they finally bring their deal back to the House of Commons. Is that your understanding? Um, I, well, I think there is a, a Commons vote coming up very shortly on Customs Union, which is, I think, quite an important staging point. Mm. Um, large numbers of Conservatives, okay. as well as opposition parties, realise, I think, leaving the Customs Union would be particularly disastrous, yes. and they may well uh, vote to change that. There are stuff coming through the House of Lords, which is questioning some of the very damaging, centralising uh, features of the current legislation. So it's absolutely right that Parliament should be questioning and changing the approach to Brexit. We've got a lot of English local election seats coming up this mm -hmm. week. Um, you said this is going to be a watershed moment for the Lib Dems. You got hammered last time round. What would a watershed feel like? Well, I'm quietly optimistic that we are turning the corner. I mean, we've done well in real elections over the last six months or so. Um, much better than the other two Hundreds parties. Hundreds of new councillors? Um, th no, the way I would, what I would regard as a good night is that we hold the various council we have, and we have quite a lot of Lib Dem councils, very good quality. We want to see them return. I think there's a, on a good night, we'll win one or two more. Take back uh, Richmond, take back Kingston. That's, on they're certainly in play. I'm not making a prediction of them. And I think there are, there are large numbers of other areas. I mean, a place like Sunderland, mm. Hull, for example, where we're facing the Labour Party, where... We, we don't expect to win the councils, uh, we may, but um, where we hopefully will get a bridgehead in the form of um, you know, a few councillors that we can then build on in future. That's what I'd regard as a good outcome. Right, so Vince Cable, thanks very Thank much you. indeed for speaking to us this morning. Yeah, yeah.